Hi, I'm Patrick Denard from Medford, Oregon, and I'm going to share with you a case of remplissage using knotless fiber tack anchors. So in recent years, we've really grown our understanding of bipolar bone loss, and particularly of the glenoid tract. And as we've understood this concept, we've adapted our technique to incorporate remplissage into many of our soft tissue label repairs. Recent systematic review out of Rush looked at this in 2019 out of AJSM, 778 patients, and what they demonstrated is that the recurrence rate was actually much higher with an isolated bank cart repair compared to Latter-J, or even the lowest recurrence rate was with a remplissage where it was 4.4%, so nearly half of that with Latter-J. So we've had a lot of success with remplissage, and we've used this technique for several years, but our technique has changed over time. Originally, we would do a knotted technique where we placed two suture anchors in the Hillsax defect posteriorly, but then had to go into the subacromial space and tie knots. That took increased time compared to what we do now. Currently, we use a knotless technique where we use two knotless 1.8 or 2.6 millimeter fiber tack anchors. And I'll show you a technique subsequently where we can do this percutaneously without having to go into the subacromial space. This leads to increased time savings and it's backed up biomechanically with studies that show increased pullout compared to techniques where we tie knots. So here's a case example of a young man, right hand dominant. He's had a left shoulder dislocation after sliding into second base and this is his third dislocation after the first one occurred two years previous. He's otherwise healthy, but based on his age and activity level, he's at high risk for recurrence. On his exam, he has normal motion, he has good strength, but he has instability on exam, as evidenced by his positive apprehension maneuver and positive relocation maneuver. Here are his radiographs. You see an AP radiograph here. We can look at the glenoid and see that he has minimal bone loss. If we look at the axillary view, you see that he has a large hill sax lesion posteriorly. We're going to gain a better appreciation of this with this MRI. Again, we scroll up and down this axial MRI and we can see his hill sax lesion. Now the bone loss on the glenoid and the labrum is not well defined here, but we know by definition with that hill sax lesion, he's had a dislocation. We look at the sagittal view here, you can see he has a slight amount of bone loss. This does not look like a lesion that's going to require bone grafting. So we're going to proceed with an arthroscopic repair and I'm going to show you how we use these knotless fiber tack anchors to accomplish that. So here's his diagnostic arthroscopy. We have a left shoulder viewing from a posterior viewing portal. You can see his bank heart tear anteriorly, and as we pull posteriorly, we can see his large hill sacs lesion. I'm going to move to an ASL portal, and I'm first going to calculate his glenoid width. I estimate that his glenoid width is about 12 millimeters posteriorly, so our projected width overall should be about 24 millimeters. And on my estimation here, he has about 3 millimeters of bone loss anteriorly. I'm now going to take that and calculate his hill sacs interval. And we can see here we're estimating it. It's difficult to estimate in some cases, but we're going to estimate this at about 15 to 18 millimeters. So we have a borderline lesion, but based on his age and activity level, I think it's going to be best to do a remplissage in this case because he's at high risk of recurrence. So I placed a Gemini cannula posteriorly. I like this cannula posteriorly because I can usually pull the soft tissue posteriorly and really create a space. I'm first going to curette the defect. I want to create a good base for healing. Next, I'm going to insert my remplissage anchors. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a spinal needle to locate where I want to place my anchors. From here, I'm then going to insert a threaded cannula, and I'll swirl this cannula around to create some space in the subacromial area beneath the deltoid. But I'm not going to go all the way through the soft tissue with that cannula. Now through that cannula, I can penetrate through the capsule and the tendon, percutaneously with my knotless fiber tack anchor. We want to first place our anchor inferiorly, then through that same cannula, I'm going to place my second anchor more superiorly. In doing this, my sutures from both anchors are through that same cannula. We'll drill our superior anchor, place our fiber tack anchor. This is going to set us up for our subsequent remplissage. I'll then go to my bank cart repair, and I'll skip through the steps here, but you can see we have a lesion which we've prepped. I'm going to use knotless fiber tacks to perform my repair here. I'm going to place three anchors. These are 1-8 knotless fiber tack anchors. We really like these anchors because we can get nice tension of the labrum. And especially with using those knotless anchors, we can get as low as we need to get to reestablish the labral bumper. I'm going to pull the repair stitch posteriorly after I've shuttled through and then bring the repair stitch down into the knotless mechanism. And if desired, after I place my subsequent anchors, I can go back and retension. 
Here you can see that labrum pulled up nicely to the glenoid rim. I'll tension a little bit more as I hold against the anchor and then cut the tail. So here's our completed bank heart repair. And now I need to simply complete my remplissage. Since I have those sutures coming out my percutaneous cannula posteriorly, I can simply link those two anchors through that cannula to create my double mattress knotless stitch without having to go into the subacromial space. There you see that posterior capsule nicely inset into the humerus. So here he is at two years post-op. He has excellent range of motion. He has full external rotation despite the remplissage, full forward elevation, and good internal rotation behind the back. Now here he is at the collegiate level participating in boxing. You can see that remplissage is holding up quite well on that left side, and he's been back to full activities. So I hope you enjoyed this technique. I think if you give it a try, you'll really find you'll have good success in your patients with increased efficiency for you in the operating room. Thank you.